I felt like every piece of wood in the woods, every tree, every leaf was mine when I was growing up because my playground was just raw nature, including the river that was right near the house. Well, the family heritage um, is in rural Patuxent Corridor. Uh, my great-grandfather, a guy named Carter Jones, acquired a farm, um, those days close to 400 acres, for $5,000, the bargain of the century, um, was in receivership. Um, when we go back to the office, I'll show you there's actually a alleged hanging tree in the yard. The, the legend goes that Eli Harrington, the former sheriff of Prince George's County at the turn of the century, used to do freelance hangings, uh, otherwise known as lynchings. Um, he used to take up a collection in order to finance them, and when he needed money, he would just find somebody to string up. And the legend goes that he did an unrighteous hanging. Um, basically, a guy who was innocent of nothing except, I guess he was home, I guess he was uh, accessible. On the gallows, uh, he put a hex on Eli. He told Eli that if you do this thing that you're about to do, you're going to go straight to the dogs. And thereafter, Eli Harrington had a string of bad luck, the way it's told. His wife died of consumption, his crops failed, his cattle wandered up onto a little hilly knoll and died. In fact, we still call that little knoll uh, the graveyard, because when my folks came here, it was uh, bleach bones where the cattle from Eli's uh, herd had uh, died from some kind of uh, cattle blight. I'm not even sure what it was. But to this day, the hanging tree still exists. It sits in my, what is now my front yard on the family farm. Earlier, the, this is a rich guy's game. The environment has become, regrettably, a province of people with resources. And I assure you, the first thing the other side tries to do when we take uh, bring a case to court is to try and get rid of us on standing or argue um, that it's not fair that we have the money to do these things. They're used to buying what they want and they're accustomed to the role of environmental organizations begging on their hands and knees you know, please throw us a wetlands project, give us some mitigation, would you kind of please, please, please. So if you meet our opponents, and mind you, we do have opponents, we do have opponents, there are people who could care less about the environment, except to the extent they can make folding money out of it, you know. Um, those are folks who exploit the fact that they actually have all the resources in the world to buy whatever they want. And ultimately, they're a speeding train. They roll over the regulatory system, they roll over citizens in their path, if they want to put a pipeline through the middle of your front living room, I assure you, they will find a way to do that. We like to, at Patuxent Riverkeeper, fight those battles that some folks can't fight for themselves, where we can fund them. If we can fund them, we will certainly respond more quickly to somebody who's getting rolled by an unfair, uncaring establishment.